Hey there, so what's on the studio today? Well, actually it's more like uh, towards the end of the day, late evening, as you can see by the golden light, as I've got one of the studio lights switched on. But uh, still a very beautiful evening outside. Um, and on the, um, on the image here, we see a painting which is uh, one meter 70 high by one meter 50. It's, uh, it's called uh, The Eternal Field. And uh, it's, uh, it's using a motif that I've gone back to repeatedly over the last uh, 20, plus, 20 plus years. And uh, <clears throat> there are there are two in this series. The other one's uh, slightly smaller. I have made a a, a video about it, um, and um, they're set against. It looks uh, it looks black, but it's not. It's it's actually a very very dark layered blue, um, which can be seen picked up in um, uh, in different lights if you put jet black next to it, you, you would obviously see the difference. Um, and uh, it's bouncing around with uh, complementary colours of uh, violet uh, magenta to the pale yellow and orange. And um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a field of flowers set against a, a backdrop of... Uh, kind of infinite space, if you like, really. And uh, things are moving uh, and falling, picking up again, reforming, um, spinning off at uh, unusual angles and uh, disintegrating and so on. And that's the idea that uh, there would be this uh, uh, perpetual idea of growth um, but set against an infinity backdrop. Um, and um, they're also playing with the idea of being deliberately beautiful. The, the, the motif, of course, uh, suggests that, but um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting way to approach a painting to try to find something which works on many levels as a painting, but also works on a purely sensuous, beautiful uh, idea. And <clears throat> there's, a, there's a movement here, which I particularly like, which I'm not quite sure how to describe the shape of it actually, but it's a, a sort of, sort of here there's a kind of oval um, shape and going around the edge of it is a sort of S curve and it's subtle, but if you notice um, that the light is centered uh, and so there's a, a, a sort of vignette, I suppose, forming around the painting and focusing the eye onto the three quarters position of the painting somewhere around here. Um, but <clears throat> uh, I tried to balance that with pinging elements of bright areas of color and um, pale tonalities and uh, I'm not entirely sure what all the flowers are in here some of them I've completely invented obviously there are Michaelmas daisies and so on but um, as the forms spin and I look at them sideways and redraw them and looking at things in different angles they become uh, abstract elements so this sort of sweeping kind of shape down here, uh, a spinning off uh, uh, sort of blue and white shape just there. And uh, they're built, the painting's built up slowly in, in, um, in glazes and uh, trying to find the rhythm and the positioning of the elements which most attract me. Um, and uh, dulling down certain areas of color so they're not too obtrusive. So for example, this, um, this um, flower down here is uh, semi-hidden by a glaze of this dark velvety blue, whereas that one here is pinging out of the light. Um, but the drips and the stains are, 
are deliberate and um, I think it adds a, 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 a movement and a, a veil to the whole painting. And so uh, that's it. This is Eternal Field 1. And uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Have a great day.